Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to have a look at Germany's wide overloads and very briefly touch on England looking to release Rousseau. So initially, Germany started with a 3-1 deep, but later in the game moved to a 2-5-3 deep versus England's 4-4-2 or 4-2-3-1 shape out of possession. With a 3-1 deep, Germany were looking for third player runs, which were expected to beat the England press and take advantage of the German overload in wide spaces. And with runs from the wide midfielders or full back they were looking to try and dislocate those England centre-backs from central positions into wider areas. For example, one of your runners could be Magul from deep, another being Brand from the left-hand side, making a run from left to right. And on occasion, Germany created this back three shape by having Heinrich, the right centre-back, push out in the right-hand side space due to England's 4-2-3-1 shape. Okay, so with that, I wanted to have a quick look at Germany's build-up in the France game, as well as also in this game. In this case, Germany are looking to to play through the lines to Pop, who's dropped. A huge loss for the game against England. With this play, Germany are able to create um, a forced transition where we have the ball move vertically very quickly and force a retreat out of France. Unfortunately for Germany, Hoot is dispossessed in the left-hand space, but the French keeper, Mayin, uh, clears the ball and Germany are able to regain it on this left hand side. Eventually reaching um, Hoot again and she's able to pass the ball here into the Brits. And here's Pop, this is your centre forward, starting from very deep after helping to win the ball from the French clearance. Just as against England and throughout a lot of the competition, Germany's fullbacks, especially Gwyn, is a huge threat. But this here is the key area. This is the area that I wanted to focus on because we're seeing Brand make that run from left to right, similar to how we saw in the England game as well, where we're looking to try and get this centre-back to make a run out into this wide space and create a gap for Germany to exploit. Initially, we had Brand make that run and Karchawi ended up picking her up. But now we've had another run, this time by Hoot. But in this situation, Renard is going to be the one to pick her up. This is the gap that I was mentioning that Germany are looking to try and create by moving the near side of centre back away from their centre back pair. Again, with two runs by your wide midfielders, first Brand and then Hoot. This kind of dislocation is problematic, but it can be resolved by having your centre defensive midfielder in Bilbao drop to become that missing centre back and then one of your other centre midfielders or wide midfielders filling in as a CDM and trying to mop up ahead of the defence but that doesn't happen here again that space that significant space and now Gwyn is looking to try and exploit this space but also we've got this issue here 1v1s this is what defenders are looking to try and avoid as much as possible and Germany have managed to create that and the rest is history okay so moving on to England versus Germany we've got a free kick by England up the line Germany is able to regain possession with Magul looking to try and create those wide overloads. So we see ahead of Magul, the fullback wide midfielder and De Brett, the other centre midfielder. And here, Germany have managed to create a huge gap between the fullback and centre back. Again, this is the kind of distances that Germany want to create between the defensive pairs. Because with this gap, it, it forces Williamson out into that space if a ball is played in there. Same as what we had with Wendy Renard in the previous scenario. Unfortunately for Germany, Gwyn's pass is poor and England are able to regain possession. But Rachel Daly didn't watch the hand signals from Kira Walsh or pay attention to the fact that there was already at least one player close to Walsh and that the more sensible option was actually here in Williamson. And so Walsh is immediately counter-pressed by the German players. And just as Germany won, they managed to force a counter-attacking transition, eventually leading to the far side of fullback Rausch, creating a shooting opportunity for Magul. Okay, and with that, let's move on to England. On England, I have very brief notes to mention so typical two three deep uh, midfield build up with Williamson or Walsh looking to play those penetrative passes either through the lines or over the top for the England wide midfielders or for Russo when she subbed on. Unlike Russo, Ellen White provides more of a focal point for those long balls and then off her, typically the wide midfields and Kirby are looking to work around her to just make runs off the flicks. And with that, let's look at an example in the 74th minute. So we have Russo looking to receive a long ball from Mary Upps, but it's contested here by Heinrich. And of course, as classy as ever, Magul immediately plays the ball out wide and Germany are in transition again. So who plays a really nice ball, keeps the momentum of the attack going, forces England into this retreat. So whilst Germany had a ton of numbers here committed in the attack, including the substitute Lohmann and Wasmuth, unfortunately Wasmuth's touch into Lohmann is poor, and so England are able to regain possession 
And from here, we see a signature Kira Walsh incisive pass from a deep position to the unrushing centre forward. And so I think with that, we've kind of covered the key points. Congratulations to England. Thanks for watching. I'm Rao.